celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and, and high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au Oh, well, a very good afternoon to you all watching us on Facebook, on YouTube or at the Stock Journal's website. We are here at the Grand Parade of the Royal Adelaide Show. Now, it's called Grand for a very good reason. We are bringing 700 animals into this magnificent green arena. It is beautifully kept here by the Royal Agricultural and Horticultural Society. I'm here with a representative here at the moment, Councillor Jock Goss. Your interest in particular is the beef section of the show. They're coming out behind us at the moment. They certainly are. So right now, Lindsay, you've got the schools who are parading the steers and uh, they're doing a wonderful job. This is their exercise time for the day. They've all, most schools got about five steers each, all different breeds, and uh, yeah, very exciting time. Indeed, we're going to see the young representatives from many schools. I go to uh, shows all around Australia and I have to tell you, I've never seen the number of schools involved as I have here at this show. No, it's uh, very exciting. We've got nearly 30 schools entered this year and involved, which is terrific. And, uh, I mean, the visual effect of a Grand Parade, which is what brings a crowd in. It's always wonderful. It's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? So we're going to have several species here. I've seen um, some saddleback pigs coming in here, merino sheep. We have dairy cattle, beef cattle, horses coming in. We should probably go and have a chat to our beef cattle friends in a moment. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. No, they're ready and waiting. And there's some dairy coming out as well, so all good. Now we've got some historical footage, I've been going through the archives, of the Grand Parade back in the day. We're going to bring it up for the boys and girls and mums and dads at home at the moment to have a bit of a look at uh, what the Grand Parade looked back many, many years ago. Now, I have said that it's the first show we ever had here was 1840, but we are celebrating our 244th. How is that possible? That's possible because originally they had two shows in one year, so they had a spring and an autumn show, so that's how that's come about. Well, we are very, very proud indeed to be having the most longevous show, I believe, in terms of number of shows in all of the world. Absolutely, you yeah. know. So we've actually 180 years we've been going and uh, we keep going strong. It's wonderful. Well, we've just been joined by the first of our dairy breeds here. Can you tell us a bit about this breed? Well, this is the Guernsey. So the Guernsey are actually the feature breed this year and... Um, just move over to our dairy expert here and I'm sure no, 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 no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can we move over to our dairy But I know the Guernsey are the feature breed. They've been a wonderful supporter of the show really since its inception and uh, they keep to be. So uh, the numbers have been higher right now than they have been probably for the last 25 years, which is, uh, which is wonderful. And that's part of being a feature breed. So you can get the numbers, get a bit more exposure to some of these different breeds. Indeed, uh, we've got uh, two wonderful representatives here, proud dairy producers. Neville Mueller, you have been very much involved with the dairy section of this show for many, many years. Can you please tell me a little bit about your involvement dating back to your mum's history here? Well, my mum, my mum, she started showing in 19, 1936 and she got champion cow. And she was very proudly leading here and that big mural in the... In the stand in, in the stand is with my mum right in the middle. Um, my parents, my parents started showing in 1947. Um, yeah, it started from after the war, and I was born in 1948, and I've been here every year since, which tallies 72 years with cattle. That I was is four months old when I was first here, but every year for 72 years. I was about to ask you how that was possible. Now, you have to tell me, we've got a number of the other bre the, of the breeds represented here. The beautiful Ayrshires yes. are in front of us here at the moment. Now, they're a smaller breed in terms of dairy cattle, but they're quite extraordinary, aren't they? They are, but in Scotland, they're, very, uh, they're quite popular there where they came from. Um, years ago, all these cattle had big horns, and the Ayrshires had the most spectacular horns, which you don't see these days, but uh, they're getting to be a very popular breed, and the quality has, has uh, been very good in the last few years. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely magnificent. We're seeing a couple of the uh, carve exhibits here at the moment, and boy, it's really been a popular show. We're in the middle of some really challenging circumstances as farmers, but the numbers here are quite good. Well, dairy farmers are pretty resilient and they, they uh, 
it, it's a very much a tradition coming here to the show. And they encourage the children by bringing young calves they can lead for the, the junior handlers. So, um, so you can expect them to be here each year. Now I'm going to ask about a few more of our breeds, but it would be remiss of me not to have a lovely quick chat here with Matt Damon, who's representing Brighter, a wonderful organisation who's partnering with us this year for this grand parade. First of all, tell us about Brighter. Well, thanks, Lindsay, and we're, we're thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to be uh, presenting this parade today at the, uh, the iconic uh, Royal Adelaide Show. So Brighter is an initiative of the oil and gas industry to really increase uh, awareness of, of what we do and, and particularly the product, the importance of the product we produce, natural gas, uh, and how much that contributes to our daily lives, whether it's through our, our cooking and our heating or the generation of electricity, uh, in addition to that, under support, uh, supporting the manufacturing industry and thousands of jobs in, in those areas using gas to produce a whole wide range of, of products. So we think it's a very important uh, product, we're proud to produce it, uh, we're also proud to be here today in the, in sponsoring the Grand Parade. Well that's right, we couldn't run our hospitals without gas, we couldn't run our schools without gas and we couldn't run our households without gas. That's right. But um, I'm very curious to know here why you've gotten behind this. I know that uh, Brighter are all about supporting the community. We are. The, the, you know, the connection with the community, the community that supports us over many decades here in South Australia to uh, produce the, the oil and the gas that, we, that we've produced here for a long time. Uh, we've been a part of the, the community in South Australia for a long time. Companies like Santos and Beach Energy. Uh, we've had a long uh, association with lots of community events here. The Santos Tour Down Under uh, is one of them, for example. But So Brighter, uh, we're very keen to promote uh, our products and we're very keen to do that uh, at the same time as supporting uh, important community events such as the show. We thank you very much for your sponsorship here today of this magnificent Grand Parade. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you. Lovely to speak there with uh, Matt Damon from Brighter, and uh, they have been wonderful partners here for the Grand Parade. But, Neville Mueller, we have more of our magnificent dairy breeds to look at. The jerseys are here. We've got the jersey, we've got the whole scene, and my breed, the Illawarra, is the Australian breed, is, is over here. And we've had them all our life. And what's disappointed us a little bit, years ago, the whole Grand Parade was full of cattle. The whole, the whole arena, we had bulls, big bulls with horns. It was quite exciting, and but things have changed over the years. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of things changing, let's take a bit of a walk and have a look at some of these uh, cattle along the way. But yes, so things have changed these days. It has changed because the industry has changed, and um, but it's uh, there's a lot less dairy farmers, but uh, they still show their cattle and. Um, and the, it's good that they can still come to the show and let the uh, children see what's, what a dairy cow is. I love that we've got mums here exhibiting, sons here exhibiting, school kids. We've got experienced heads out here exhibiting. It's a real family pursuit, isn't it, the dairy industry? We're over here leading, and I think my grandson's over here too, but that, he's over the other side, the, over, over here. We might see him in a moment. Hey, let's, so we talked a little bit before about the beautiful Ayrshire breed that we've just seen in front of us. The jersey's now quite distinctly different looking for starters, but what are the more material differences of the jersey breed? Well, they are a little bit smaller frame. They, their milk content is got a lot more butterfat, very high um, butterfat content, but, and they eat a little less, but they very, very um, useful sort of breed for the dairy industry. I'll tell you what, if you love ice cream, if you love cheese, if you love milk, you're a partner in dairy farming. Oh, that, that is true, yes, very much so. And we, the jerseys come from the Jersey Islands near, near England, as do the Holsteins come in the uh, well, the Netherlands area, that's, uh, that's the Holstein sort of area where the, the Holsteins come from. So we've got our Holsteins in front of us now that we're seeing in the background yes. here? Yes, they are the Holsteins, they are the, the biggest of the the, the, the tallest and the biggest of the, all the um, breeds. Let me just show you how tall they are. This, this, I'm not all that short, look how tall they are. That's right, they're very tall and uh, our Illawarra breed over there which is the Australian breed, they're more middle of the range sort of cow. But they were developed in Australia after the cattle that were, came on the first boats. They dumped them off. Uh, they didn't have ports in, in the south coast of New South Wales and they dumped them off and these red cattle bred up and they've been a very popular breed for the, uh, the Australian uh, breed, uh, for the Australian country. Neville Mueller, thank you for your energy, your expertise, your enthusiasm and congratulations on 72 years here at Royal Adelaide Show. Yes, well, it's been a long grind and but it's the, my children and grandchildren that keep me going and I don't know how long I'll be here but I'll uh, 
we enjoy every year. Indeed, we've got a healthy future ahead of us and wonderful to chat to one of the stalwarts of uh, our magnificent dairy section. Speaking of dairy cattle, uh, we have cattle exhibited here both in the beef and dairy sections from many high schools. Uh, Justine Fogden, you are from Loxton High School. We've got a large number of kids here this year. Yeah, I've got 14 kids here and six deers. What are they competing in? We've, uh, they've just been setting up for now and getting weighed, but tomorrow morning is judging and they, so they've, all the steers have been weighed and they're in their weight groups for tomorrow and so they go out and they compete with steers that are the same weight. They've been, they've been scanned for fat and muscle, so yeah, the judge is looking at the right amount of fat and the right amount of muscle to pick his winners. You've got a lot of schools here to compete against. Yeah, there's 22 schools here and 145 steers. Now, one of the great schools that is here is Urbray Agricultural School. Uh, Damien Brooks, tell us a bit about the kids that you've brought this year. Uh, well, we've got a mixture of year 10s to 12s, and uh, yeah, we've uh, I think we've got about 32 students on on deck at the moment with seven steers. Just like Justine, we bring a big team, and uh, you know there's a bit of rivalry between the schools, which is always important and good. But uh, it's more about you know getting the students exposed to agriculture and also getting the public seeing what we're doing and uh, appreciate agriculture at that sense. Yeah. I think you're doing a wonderful job making sure the next generation of kids, whether they're from a farming background or not, are involved in the wonderful primary industries opportunities that are available in this state. Congratulations and good luck with the competition starting very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we're going to do a bit of a wander now. Come on with me, Matt, the camera guy. He's pretty fantastic. And I'm very ably being looked after here by Councillor Hamish Findlay, uh, who is going to walk us through the horse section now. And are we heading over to the cattle? Well, we will in a minute. I think we'll just do the horses now, if that's OK with you. What we've got here is these are a mixture of ponies. So you can see little children on little horses. Then we've got sort of adults that are riding slightly larger horses. And behind us, or sorry, way over there, actually, are the show jumpers. Now, I think it might be quite nice if we went and found a little child for you to have a chat to, don't you? I would love to do that. Oh, wonderful. We're just going to break up the uh, Grand Parade here. My apologies. Who do we think we are? Going to get in all sorts of trouble from our ringmaster, Nick Simpson, later on. And I can see one of our rural ambassadors here from New South Wales. Give us a wave. Uh, we actually have a partnership at the Royal Adelaide Show with the Sydney Royal Easter Show where we bring across the rural ambassadors and they will come and steward here, be part of the show and, uh, and get to know what our show is like and how it, uh, how it differs. And we've got some magnificent exhibitors making their way past now in our Grand Parade. Isn't this just special? I'll tell you what, it is no mean feat to make it to a royal show. To get to be part of the Grand Parade is something else entirely. And as you can see, she's won a first prize, second, second, and a fourth. Six, sorry, six. And she's got a special award ribbon because she's young, but she's, a, she's out here. And that means a lot to us, and I think a lot to you too, doesn't it? Yes. Sophie, where are you from? Australia. Australia? Are you from South Australia? No. Oh, OK. Do I have to keep guessing? Victoria? Yes. Oh, good girl. Where did you come over? Yesterday? Day before? Thursday. Yes, and how old are you? Six. Six? And this is your first show? No. Oh, so how many shows have you done? Lots. Lots. Have you? And you're only six years old. Well, well done. I'm sure Lindy wants to talk to you and probably sick of listening to me. <laughs> Not at all. Sophie, you're on a magnificent horse here today. You've done very, very well indeed, both as a rider and in terms of your exhibit here. Who helps you at home with your horse riding? Mum. Now, is Mum here today? Yes. Okay, very good. A big thank you to the mums out there that do all the wonderful work behind the scenes. Tell me a little bit about this horse's name. What do you call your horse in the paddock? Possum. And is Possum very well behaved at home and very good here at the show? Yes. Well, congratulations on your successes here today, young Sophie from Victoria and uh, her magnificent Possum. And uh, let's see if we can chat to a couple more competitors yeah, out okay, here in the fine. Grand Parade. We'll go oh. and get a... Well, here's, I, I tell you what, over here is one of our mounted pink coats and they do an absolutely amazing job. So they keep the order and the form throughout the week and they are here on mounted for 10 days. So it's early in the morning till late at night. I just want to introduce you to Lindy. Lindy's doing some live streaming for us and I've just given a wonderful example of how hard you girls work and what you do for us. And I think this horse is, is he about 20 years old or something? 23. 23 years old now. Yes. 
23. What's that in so very years? curious to see here a 23 year old horse yeah. is uh, quite extraordinary in terms of the years that if we convert it to human years how many years are we talking years old. yeah 140 years old and how many years have you had this horse coming here as a mounted steward uh, been nine nine years now, the role of a mounted steward for the mums and dads and boys and girls at home who aren't involved in the horse world and haven't competed here at the Royal Adelaide show what is your role over the 10 days well, it's bringing classes out onto the field here, onto the grass, and um, doing their classes and make sure they're safe and, um, yeah, they get around happy. Because when you bring a horse out here, it might be a fantastic horse at a small show and a wonderful horse in the paddock at home, but if all of a sudden you bring a show to the Royal Adelaide Show, bring a horse along here, and things are quite different, aren't they? What are the challenges? Oh, everything. Um, kids, balloons, um, yeah, horse and carts, yeah, it's, yeah, it's huge. Now tell us, it's quite a prestigious role to be a mounted steward here at the Royal Adelaide Show. What is your history going back with this wonderful event? Well, no, I got invited here well, nine years ago to do the, um, the red coats and I also do the section fours um, and I hunt with Strathalbyn. So we're here on Saturday and Sunday at nine o'clock. Um, which is great, yeah. Now finally, we wish you all the very, very best for your show. What is your favourite part of being involved in this magnificent event? Well, um, just watching all these beautiful horses run, trot around and, yeah, and meeting a lot of nice people. Well, it's been a great joy to speak to you. A big thank you to our mounted stewards here. Sorry. Yes. Now, they're only friends, but they look identical because the ponies look so similar. And well, we're here with uh, Georgia and Ella with their magnificent ponies, their exhibits here today. Now, will you be competing here today, Georgia, and if so, in which class? Um, in the open pony and um, gelding. Whereabouts have you travelled from and who are you exhibiting here today? Melbourne and Marinda Minx Dynasty. Where have you had success on the lead up to the Royal Adelaide Show? Um, all the ag shows and yeah. Tell me, what do you call your pony in the paddock? Nugget. Nugget. I'll tell you, so they have names for when they come out into the show environment and the show name is? Marinda Minx Dynasty. But back in the stable, we go with Nugget. I like that. Now, young Ella here. Ella, can you tell us a bit about your exhibit at this show? Um, this is Harry. Pemberley Whisper is his show name. He's, um, he's 10 and he's a pretty chilled out pony. He looks pretty comfortable out here amongst 700 animals of several different species, including pigs and uh, we've got goats out here, we've got alpacas, we've got dairy cattle, beef cattle, and you are just looking absolutely calm and resplendent up there. Now, it's a huge thing. To, can you explain to the mums and dads at home and the boys and girls how, how difficult it is to get to a royal show? You have to win a lot, don't you? We do. You have to get seven ag show wins and it just depends what area, but some are really tough. Now tell me, what are five of the major things you need to do early in the morning to get your pony ready for a royal show? Um, they need to be clean. They need to be like listening to you and work down. They need to be plaited, like in their mane. They need to have checkers. And they're right, it just has to be ready. You're looking pretty ready here today. We wish you all the very best. Ella, Georgia, thank you for having a chat to me in the middle of the Grand Parade. Hamish, we're having some, a lovely time out here lovely chatting jumper. with our... Indeed. Would you like to have a look at a show jumper? Yes, let's yeah. go meet a show let's jumper. Come on. Right Boy, do they bring some fun to the show, the show jumpers. They are... See these extraordinary fences over here in front of us? I said before I'm not all that short. I'm really not all that short. But you'll see our show jumpers jumping this height extraordinary. They'll actually jump higher than this in the World Cup on Thursday, but we'll bring that to you on the live stream later on in the week. So we're going to have a quick chat with one of our show jumpers now. I met some yesterday that have travelled from Toowoomba. They've never been to the Royal Adelaide show before. We have show jumpers here from Sydney. We have show jumpers here from country towns. Um, they've really travelled out here because this is one of the preeminent events in all of Australia. Hello, who are we chatting with here today and where have you travelled from? I'm Thomas Harris. I've travelled from Adelaide Hill, so 20 minutes away. Well, you haven't travelled very far, but it's pretty huge to be here competing at your Royal Show. Tell us a bit about your lead-up to this campaign. Uh, the lead-up wasn't great. We've had a few injuries set us back, but I uh, managed to get him here. Um, and he's doing pretty well, so pretty happy. Now, your show jumping background, where did it all begin and how many times have you been here at Royal Adelaide? Uh, it began probably three years ago. This is my third Royal. Um, and we've just been prepping for what's coming up and 
we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Now tell me, there are lots of different breeds of horses used in show jumping. We have, we have thoroughbreds out there, we'll have Australian stock horses, warm bloods are incredibly popular. Who have you brought with you to this show? Uh, this is MV King, owned by Michael Beers. Um, he's an off-the-track thoroughbred, 16 now, so getting on, but uh, a lot of thoroughbred. They're great for show dumplings. So. I'll let you get back in your grand parade. Thank you for having a chat to me. Isn't that wonderful to see, though? So we have horses racing all over the state and doing well elsewhere, and, uh, and when they finish their racing career, they can go on to become fantastic show jumpers and even compete here at the highest level at the Royal Adelaide Show. We're having a wonderful time here. Now, you'll need to tell me, Hamish Finlay, a bit about the evolution of the Grand Parade here at the show. How has it changed over the decades? It's actually changed very little at all. The only thing that's changed probably is the technology, like you, you're out here. Otherwise, if you go back, say, 70, 80 years, it's going to look exactly the same. So we still have all the same classes. We still have three basic types of horses, different heights, you know, heights and weights. We still have kids. We still have adults. Everything has stayed the same. Show jumping, of course, they jump higher and the horses are fitter and there's, you know, all of that. But cattle, you know, dairy, beef, sheep, pigs, it's all the same. Nothing has changed, really. And I love that you put it on because it is no mean feat to bring this number of animals and competitors all into the one area at one time. The ringmaster, Nick Simpson, he does a wonderful job making this happen. He does indeed, and he's very good at it too. Look, um, our, our committee does a, a sort of a roster thing, a changeover about every three or five years. So everybody on the committee basically gets a chance to be the ringmaster. Ringmasters will bring different styles to how they, they want to conduct the 10 days, but one thing never changes, and that's the Grand Parade. So that is very consistent. doesn't matter what your personality is. It'll stay the same. Now, I'll tell you, if uh, you haven't been able to make it here for this particular Grand Parade, it's not the only one, is it? No, there's another one on Saturday night, which is the evening one, 7 p.m. And that, that's quite spectacular as well because everything's under lights. So it actually looks totally different. And, you know, of course, evening entertainment straight after the Grand Parade, ending with fireworks, we generally get a pretty good roll-up, which is great. I'll tell you what, right now on the screen that we're showing the live stream out on Facebook, on the Stock Journal and on YouTube, we're actually looking at footage from the 1960s yes. that we dug up right. of the Grand Parade. Yep. It's extraordinary footage that we're seeing right now on the screen. And uh, it really just shows you... How how the tradition of the Grand Parade has been held um, and the beauty, beauty of it, but also the popularity of it. It's really important for the competitors, but for people that live in Adelaide, it's pretty special to see it well, too. Yeah, we think it is as well, and that's why we put so much effort into it. In fact, a condition of entry, if you want to come here to the show, you have to do the Grand Parade. It's not, I don't want to, or I'm too busy. You have to do the Grand Parade. So that in itself uh, means that we generally get a very good roll-up. Um, I think it's one of those super special things. Uh, city people never get the chance to smell an animal. These days we're seeing a lot of virtual animals, but they can't smell them. And they can get up really close and touch at these grand parades, with where the horses and the cattle come in and go out. So it's a whole different experience, and I think that's more part of the value. Indeed, indeed. Now, coming up later on today in the live stream, now that our wonderful grand parade is run and done for the first of the grand parades here, uh, we have many more things to show you this afternoon. Later in tonight, we're going to show you little snippets of the night shift. So you'll see the V8s, the D-Maxes. We're even going to take a bit of a wander through the haunted house, which will be fun. But very importantly, we have horses in action coming up this afternoon for championship class. That's right, yeah. Well, this is the co this program this year is slightly different to other years, so we're doing all of our ponies and all of our galloways and all of our hats in stages, so one, two, three. What we used to do uh, was blend them so that we would have the mums and the kids and the adults all at once. So this year's a bit different, so we that's why we're having championships so early in the week. So the show only started two days ago, and we're already having championships, and they will be for the ponies. So ponies, the little ponies, the pony hacks, the show ponies, so basically, it'll be the, the best of the best of the best today. And m most of these good ones will then go on to Melbourne, to the Melbourne show. And having a win at Adelaide, I'm pleased to say, is value. <laughs> it certainly is. Well, boys and girls, mums and dads, uh, we'll be joining you this afternoon. We're going to go and chat with a family that's been competing here for over 100 years in the heavy horse section of the show. But then after that, we're going to bring you four championship classes. We'll see you then. Enjoy your afternoon.
Let's celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and the high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au This event is special because it's the premium wine show in Australia. South Australia makes 75% of Australia's wines and this is where we have the best wine. If you want to understand wine and enjoy wine, come here. It's great value, yeah. it really is. It's such good value. You can go to a tasting sort of event anywhere, but it's not going to be like thousands, like literally thousands. There's some new wines that you don't ever see in some of the wineries and to get such a broad spectrum of wine in one night is brilliant. We're talking about wines that are just out on the tables here that are upwards of $150, $200 bottles, right down to your $20, $30 bottles, which are great to get into as well. There is a wine here for everybody. There's about 70 different categories of wine, and you just got to get out there. You've got the freedom to pick up the bottle, put it in your glass and taste. I think it's good that it's uh, a little bit unstructured, and I don't mean that in a, a chaotic way. Uh, nobody's here trying to stop you from opening a red or opening a white or whatever. This beats like going to cellar doors and stuff. It just cuts all of that out. Like and the access to everything. Yeah. No big queues to wait around for one bottle. Fortunately, I spent the extra $10 to do the master class at 5.30. And that was fantastic to try the award winning wines. I keep coming back each year because I enjoy seeing the new vintages, the new wines, the new take on some of the old style wines. Amazing. of freestyle motocross are back with the all-new Krusty Demons Rise of the Demon World Tour featuring an all-star lineup of the world's best FMX riders, world record holders, Krusty Babes and fan favourites including Australia's own Jackson Strong. This ain't no circus. Taking over the country with 12 massive shows. 
Tickets on sale now at Krusty.com. <laughs>
celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au Well, welcome back to our live stream here at the Royal Adelaide Show, the 244th Royal Adelaide Show. And speaking of things that started a long time ago, there was a time, once upon a time, where humans travelled not in cars but in horse and carriage and uh, that our milk was delivered and our beer was delivered and, in fact, anything we needed to move, that was done with horse and cart. And uh, I'm very pleased today to be with two of our exhibitors, the March family, Kerry ann March and Russell March, who are not competing for a few days yet, but they've kindly brought out one of their beautiful wagons to show us today a bit of what they do. First of all, let's talk about the magnificent heritage of your property. Hi, well, we've been um, farming in down south of Adelaide in Lonsdale. It's been in the family for 125 years, and in that time we've used heavy horses, my, my ancestors have used heavy, heavy horses to do the farming, and we've taken up that now doing the harness here at the Royal Adelaide Show. Uh, yes. It's pretty extraordinary. We're going to bring up some photos at the moment because this is a real family pursuit. We've got your parents that are here that are very much involved with the industry. We'll chat to them in a moment or surprise them with a microphone. And your kids have been involved too. So we're going to see if we can get these photos up here now. Yes. So this is a photo, actually this is my uh, husband Russell and our son Christian who have been competing quite some time with our pair out there in one of the events. Uh, it's, it is very much a family affair and they all love coming out and doing um, events with us, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's me with Christian, um, again here at the Royal Adelaide in a, in a break that we built ourselves um, and the harness and everything is um, um, more modern harness than what we started with, yeah. So. And this is a photo of our daughter Madeline, who's um, she's uh, competing again this year as well, uh, driving one of our horses out there in a junior driver class. Um, is Madeline? She's in uh, the lady driver. She's the yeah, lady driver. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't actually see that's that one. Bella. Oh, that's Isabella. So she's still in the junior driver. Yeah, this year. So, um, and that vehicle will be out there again soon. That's. Oh, this, this photo here, this is when we won the uh, Supreme Champion with our horse, Glencore and Monty. And um, he's, it was a very proud time for us, so that's a family affair again of having all of us there to celebrate. He was a horse we bred, um, uh, Jet's one that uh, we didn't breed, but he also won the Max Fowler Award, which is a, a, a special award for uh, geldings in Australia. Uh, we get it once every six years and it uh, travels around Australia. So. Yeah, and he's actually here uh, this year, competing again this year, and so we're very proud to have him out there representing us. And yeah, uh, I don't know which award that is, Christian. This is the, uh, the Clem Loeffler Award. Um, our boy Glen Quarry, um, Scottish Piper, or Bill, he won that a few years ago. He won it actually three times in a row. He did a very good job, very prestigious. It's the, for the best gelding in, in South Australia. So. Um, Kerry Ann's family, is that one Grant? That one's my, this, this is my grandfather who um, was working the farm with his team of horses. He had a five in hand team of Clydesdales that he used to use on the property. And um, that is where we get our love from for the Clydesdale from. And this one here is again on our farm at home. This is the hay stacking. So back in the previous times, we'd have the horse drawn out there doing the binding, um, cutting the hay and then stooking the hay up and then they'd go out and help pick it up. And this farm, this picture here is actually my great grandfather. I call him Pomps. And he's out there again with a five um, horse team. And uh, between Pomps and Grampy and, and the family, they used to work the farm to be able to keep the farm going, feed the horses, the cows uh, that we had for milking, all the, the pigs that were there. And it was really was um, a really um, family orientated thing where we, we all, the, the farm was there to keep the family going. 
we had sheep on the property as well and that was our, our money source or income so we've also got some beautiful photos here from a time back when Adelaide was uh, on the back of our Clydesdales as well not just from a transport perspective but also delivery we've talked a bit about the farming role on your uh, property too we've got another gorgeous photo here a very important street oh, here yeah. in Adelaide yeah yeah no that's an amazing photo to show because not only were there cl their cars actually there we had still had the horses there for the um, fuel because fuel was really quite expensive the horses were actually one of the most economical that, and the that best way to was actually uh, Michael Keogh's actually got one of those vehicles around identical, identical to that as uh, similar to ourselves so that that vehicle that's in that photo could well be one of the vehicles being shown at the show so. well this is from 1926 in Rundle Street absolutely yes. extraordinary footage here today hey speaking of extraordinary things we've got another photo here of Royal Adelaide show back in the day wow yeah it's great to see that many horses out there actually the Clydesdale it was a very um, prestigious breed to have and people would come to the royal show to show off their Clydesdale in uh, to get them um, their name out there they breed a good Clydesdale here come and buy my Clydesdale so yeah it was very good actually to be involved in the show it was at high prestigious awards and it still is today that was 1936 that photo let's have a look at this magnificent wagon here Russell take us through it um, so this one's uh, basically a it's, a it's a bit of a mismatched um, vehicle in a sense we call it a passenger drag so um, we hand paint the wheels so the wheels are a little bit um, I suppose on the rough side compared to a full show vehicle but it's not purely authentic this one but we do it just so that we can do the grand parades and things and actually take passengers safely and we do tours and things with it it's a real family affair restoring the vehicles um, my brother-in-law uh, Damien Pokesley he comes down um, and we uh, we worked on this one for quite a long time but all the guards and everything all hand molded and everything like that and we and it's a bit of a, a labor of love even though um, uh, this one's probably never going to make the show ring as, as a show vehicle we enjoy driving this sort of thing around as a group of people yeah so so the seat. So walk us through the driver's seat here. Okay, so this one actually was uh, given to me by my uh, my uh, grandmother's sister-in-law, um, and it was her her um, uh, grandmother's, or I think it came off of her um, Adelaide Express buggy. So the, the seat itself is probably from about 1905. So we've modified the seat so that it suits this vehicle, and then I've followed the same pattern through the rest of the vehicle, which is designed on a. Polish vis a vis, yeah. Absolutely magnificent. What, the craftsmanship is extraordinary, and you're keeping a beautiful part of our heritage alive. Should we go and meet uh, Jet, who in yeah. fact would draw this? Come on for a wander around here. Now, Jet won the Max Fowler Award only quite recently, I understand, uh, last year. And so, look, if you've never seen a Clydesdale before, there's a couple of remarkable things about this particular breed of horse. One is their size, they're quite significant in size, and they're very strong, aren't they? They are, yes. Jet, he's He's, quite, he's a big boy, he really is quite big. Um, and they uh, are designed to pull heavy loads. They can actually also doing the ploughing at home, but Jet's more the type that you would have out on the on the streets, out pulling the brewery wagons, or pulling the, the loads out in the, in the um, streets of Adelaide. Huge feet, and the feathers, the feathers are very unique to this breed, aren't they? Yes, the feather is actually a, it's so that this horse who is, a, um, a native of Scotland, uh, they have snow in the winter time. So the feather helps to keep their feet dry and keep them warm over this, those snowy months. So very important, very unique to the Clydes on the heavy horse. Kerry Ann, we've only got a few moments left. Could you show me the collar? Because the collar is yes. so important. Let's go have a look. Come on. Look. Wonder, watch, watch yourself there, Emily, camera lady. <laughs> You might have a very memorable royal show walking behind a horse yes. of that size. So, so in here we have some harness. We have the harness in here. This is our locker. And come, come in. So this is a collar. Part of the very integral part of, um, of our harness. This is what goes over the horse's head and sits on their shoulders. Designed especially for each horse that, it, that uses it. And that allows them to walk forward and pull that vehicle along with them. So these, these collars... Collar, so they're much heavier than the, than the, um, the American counterparts. are so much lighter um, collars of it compared to these. So these are very authentic and traditionally made collars here. And they, they're actually still made in Australia, actually. We're very lucky we've got some people who are keeping that craft going and making this harness coming um, into the new age for us people who still like to, to show it off. Yes. Well, I want to thank you both. Good luck with your competition on Monday. Thank you for taking on this walk down. 
you know, this wonderful history that you keep alive. Hey, and just with the camera quickly, I'm going to turn it on a man here that doesn't want to be on the camera at all. This is Roy Hinckley and his wonderful wife, Marge, and they are the ones that brought this passion into their family. You must be so proud of what Kerry ann and Russell yes, are achieving. Yes, we are. We're very proud. Um, we needed somebody to carry on. There they are, you know, next generation and, and my grandson and my granddaughters. Hey, Christian, how far have you travelled to drive a vehicle here at the show this year? Well, I came from Geraldton, which is approximately 3,100k away. It's uh, five hours of flying. Well, it's a bit of a flight, but, you know, gentle flight to come here and enjoy myself here as a holiday. Well, you wouldn't miss it for the world. You're going to see Jet out here over the next few days competing. You're going to see their magnificent vehicles, both old and new. The March family wish, wish them all the very best of luck. And uh, we're about to bring you our champion classes in just a moment. We've got our pony hacks coming up. We've got show hunters coming up as well. We'll see you in the main arena in just a moment's time.